Welcome back everybody. In today's video, it looks like the frauditors got a little bit of attention on national news. So they recently appeared on Fox 61. It was Josh Abrams from Accountability for All. And I think that it could be a good thing or a bad thing. Now, obviously, he got a lot of publicity out of this. But, you know, people can see through the cracks. Now, during the short interview, he said one of the most hilarious thing I have ever heard in my entire life. You guys will fall off your chair laughing when you hear this. Without further ado, enjoy the video. Well, Connecticut is, of course, called the Constitution State, and this is an issue that's fundamental to our very democracy. The First Amendment of the Constitution, freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Shortly before Christmas, a team of First Amendment auditors entered the Ridgefield Town Hall with their cameras and started interacting with government officials. Can you please shut that off? No, no, it's silly. What do you mean, no? Get out of here. Ridgefield public employee Patricia Pacheco eventually hit the panic button under her desk as the interaction between Pacheco and auditor Josh Abrams escalated. Oh, ma'am, it's not going to be good. Don't do that. You're going to look very... Oh, All right, ma'am. So All right. You're going to have to call someone now. Unfortunately, she's in trouble. Ridgefield police responded and charged Pacheco with disorderly conduct. We go in and we, we want to flex our rights and stress test the Constitution. But State Representative Pat Callahan is looking into crafting state law to limit auditor access. He told Fox 61 he believes there's an ulterior motive. Let's not even call them First Amendment people. What they're doing is trying to start a fight. If they were really interested in information, they certainly could pick up the phone and make an appointment with any of the departments at these town halls that they're trying to visit and not come in and put their phone you know, an inch from your nose and try and, and, try and provoke you. But Abrams, who runs a YouTube channel called Accountability for All, told Fox 61 that while he does make money off the clicks, it's about the education. It is a balance, but I can tell you one thing that myself or many of the other large channels that do what I do, they never sacrifice the integrity of this movement um, for clicks and views. <laughs> Now, that is honestly the most hilarious thing I have ever heard in my life. So he says he would never jeopardize the investigation for money. So why would he need to make five live streams e-begging about the same video? Or why does Amagansa Press completely changes the narrative on a thumbnail and title to make this lady sound like an evil woman, even though she treated him with the utmost respect, much more than he deserved. And then why is, at the moment of editing right now, Ninja e-begging on Delete Law's channel for $500, even though he makes $10,000 a month? Could you please answer all these questions, Josh? Abrams responded to the idea of a state law putting rules on the Constitution. It's a very dangerous precipice when the government has the ability to be the arbiter of who can and cannot exercise their rights. During many of these encounters, police are called. It's really mutual respect. If you show up and give anybody you're dealing with the respect that they deserve, you're going to get it back. Ridgefield police told us they conduct internal training on First Amendment rights. We advise the public and all the other town agencies to do the same internally is to educate their employees on First Amendment rights because we know they could show up any day at any time. Ridgefield police tell us these auditors know to stick to the public areas. As for that public employee, she was given the chance to apologize and avoid a charge. She refused, but her disorderly conduct charge was eventually dropped. Callahan admitted it's difficult to be able to craft a law that would still be in line with the Constitution, while Abrams told Fox 61 that if this does become a law, it would be, quote, as good as the paper it's written on. Reporting in Ridgefield, Matt Karen, Fox 61 News. So there's a couple of interesting points here. First of all is that lawmakers are trying to fix the frauditor problem in that state and they're designing a law that will fix that issue and limit these frauditors harassment but there's also the frauditors saying that they don't care about the law and that if this law is written they will not follow it after all they're career criminals so why would they 
Now we're gonna move on to the next topic for the video. It's actually an update from Last Days of Freedom. So it turns out that he actually got his life together. So he got a job, he's no longer e-bagging, and yeah, I'm really surprised. Here, take a look. What's going on everybody, it's Jeremiah. Hey look guys, I'm sorry to have to do this, but I'm gonna have to ask you guys for some help. If we got the room paid till the morning, but if we don't come up with the $480 to pay the room so we can get until next week, then we're literally gonna be out on the streets in the morning, guys. So yeah, to those who fell for my joke before, how dare you? Did you really think he was going to find a job and stop e-bagging? Come on, it's in his DNA, but I'm sure most of you guys didn't fall for it. I tried everything, we tried to go get a loan, she tried to go do her taxes today. Had the wrong W-2 or something. But guys, if you could give me some help one last time, man. All I gotta do is make it till next Thursday. And then we got a hotel reservation in White House where my job is. And I get my check then also. So I'll have it taken care of from that moment on. We just need until next week. So guys, if any of you can help me, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Please, guys. I can't have my daughter out on the streets with nowhere to go. Not when it's warm during the day and freezing at night. It's insane. So he should just turn his daughter over to a family member or CPS because obviously you can't provide for her. You cannot secure her safety. You just admitted it. Honestly, I'm tired of seeing this nonsense and I really think CPS should draw the line here and take the kid away. I would usually not advocate for something like this, but obviously this guy cannot secure her safety and he just keeps using her to e-bag on YouTube. It's disgusting, honestly. Good pneumonia weather. But guys, please, if you can give me a hand. I know times are hard, trust me, I do, I know this. And I really truly hate asking you guys, but I'm literally begging you guys to help me, please. So that way me and my family's not out on the streets with nowhere to go. All right, guys, I'm gonna end this video. Let's hope the jury does the right thing and convicts Thor good. I really, really hope they do. It seemed like they were going to, but who knows? So guys, again, I'm begging you, can y'all guys help me, please? I just gotta make it to next Thursday and we got a reservation in White House and I'll get my check in and we'll be good. We're good from that point on. I just need one help last time. One last time y'all to help me, please guys. Please, I'm begging y'all. For anybody who does donate, thank you. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Sorry to have to ask you guys. I really am. It's humiliating. It really is humiliating. It really is. And once again, the safety of his daughter is our responsibility. Us, complete strangers that never met him in real life before, we are responsible for the safety of his daughter. We need to give him money so that he hopefully spends it on the hotel. Yeah, okay tired of this clown anyways thanks so much for watching everybody please like and subscribe it really helps the channel and i'll see you guys on the next video i live here